so were you mad in the chat today? Yeah, I got a little little upset at first. You did? Yeah. Why? About about Cook. Uh, Brett's like typical. It is I'll typical, man. Uh, I'm gonna get well, Brett I'm didn't gonna get want a running back at all. No. Well, I definitely didn't want one in the second round. Yeah. But yeah, don't you think for the value, it was a he's good pick? He's a top 20 player in this class overall, and we got him at 41. Um, he was 14th on our big board. So. He was 14th on the big board, Brett. And our big board is gospel. To us, to me, it is. Well, it's I was pretty damn close. No, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been it's been it's been pretty good. It's been pretty spot on. Um, no, you know what? I mean, look, like I said a bunch of times before, I think I, I am one hundred percent okay rolling into this season with Murray and McKinnon, and yep. I think. One of the biggest problems with our run last year wasn't anyone at the running back position. It was the fact that there was literally no space to run. You were handed the ball, and you were met by three defenders almost instantly. All right. And, yeah. a, and a lot of people passed that off to McKinnon and, and Asiata. <clears throat> and uh, I felt like we had a chance to take a big step forward with that today. And yep. in the second round... I feel like we could have paid the price to move up to get a, uh, a oh, yeah. game changer right. at the position, and Spielman dropped the ball. I mean, obviously, we don't know like the details, and and maybe I think he we was trying this for the discussion, and, and we're actually going. This is the discussion. Started. This is the discussion. Oh, this is literally what we're doing. That's fine. We're not we're not having an intro or anything. No. no. Welcome to the party. This is how it goes late well, night. Yeah, it's been <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, I've been so just like <laughs> Round I've table, been late night. Out, so. <laughs> um, okay. so, so uh, yeah, I was a little fired up about that aspect of it. I mean, I okay. like, I like Delvin. Listen. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, you're right about the offensive line. There was no way no more to run. I know you like McKinnon a lot. I think he's fine. All due respect, Asiata was garbage last year. He, he seriously that goal line stuff that was supposed to be his deal time and time again he got met at the point of attack and got pushed back Asiata did not do his one job that Asiata was supposed to do last year so I thought the running backs weren't very good either and so I think I agree offensive lines a bigger need but with that value 14 I always thought they were going to bring in another guy to to compete with Murray or share carries with and those three guys now in the backfield yeah. If the offensive line's improved, I think that that's going to improve the rushing attack. I don't know. You don't even need an offensive line with Dalvin Cook. Ooh. And you can absolutely burn to the outside. Yeah, you, watch okay. him move. You, watch him, you watch him move, Brett. Turn on a highlight tape of him. Watch how many 60-plus yarders yeah. he breaks off. Yeah, and I'm going to be honest. He's so by himself. I, I, haven't, I haven't watched a ton of them because kind of didn't assume we were going to be yeah. you know, in, yeah. the, uh, in the running for him. So, BJ, for everyone that is watching this that is maybe trying to catch up on what happened today, why don't, you, you. Why, why don't you tell everyone who the Vikings selected, position, school, and give them a little brief uh, uh, scouting, report. scouting report on them. Brief, BJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, the Vikings started off the day moving up from 48 to number 41 with the Cincinnati Bengals. I uh, swapped out a fourth rounder to get there. Picked elite running back prospect Dalvin Cook out of Florida State. Uh, one of the absolute most dominant players in this class, period. He can absolutely burn to the outside. He can run up the gut. He can run outside. He runs a 4-5 on paper. I think he plays a lot faster than that. His breakaway speed is strictly unmatched. It's unparalleled by this class. He is the greatest home run threat that this class had, and there were about 15 outstanding running backs in this class. So, you know, you can I, can, I can understand why people might be a little bit annoyed with trading up to get a running back in such a deep class, but at the same time, this is a guy that could have gone top 15 if it wasn't for these, uh, these medical issues and the off-field concerns, which are so ridiculous. They're not even that big of a deal. It's not a character issue. It's just a guy having too much fun. And uh, after that, Spielman didn't miss a beat. <laughs> beat dogs, um, he hopped. <laughs> they were he hopped. Dogs, fun, man. 
and an alleged punched woman. But hey, sometimes you yeah, gotta have I a mean, too much fun. Uh, okay, so so Wait, Dalvin, a- Dalvin Cook. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Brett brought it up. In the yeah, chat. so, that so one, no, that one was tossed out though. The bar fight thing that yeah. was tossed out. That and, one and actually, and that one wasn't tossed out. That one he was at, I, and I've only read. Wasn't on he said it was tossed out? Today. No, no, no. Hold on, said, hold on. There were a few that were tossed out. When I hear tossed out, I mean didn't even get to court. Okay. Now the the punching the girl from what I read that actually went to court and he was found not guilty. Mm-hmm. So right. what was going on about the dogs? That's um, okay. So, me. No. <laughs> well, anyways, regardless, I, I don't. I don't think that the care. I think the character issues are overblown. I think a lot of it is just a product of playing at Florida State and just well, and and, 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 and his right upbringing there. and his upbringing and and Austin found a great article on Sports Illustrated. Uh, I'm not sure who wrote it. Um, Robert Lemko. Okay, probably his boy Andy Benoit or whatever. But no, that's not. <laughs> that's not his style. But, but, we, not, but we but tweeted sure it out. Sure it, it was him. He, he, he grew up in a very uh, rough environment. Um, he, he lived, he grew up uh, under the care of, I think, a woman named Betty, from what I read, who wasn't his mother. I don't even think it was his grandmother. It was kind of someone who just took him in. And I guess she took in multiple <coughs> kids from the area and kind of fostered them um, mm-hmm. and let them live with her. And uh, it was actually a really cool article. I mean, um, it talks about how like these big coaches used to come for college coaches used to come to her come to her house and and meet all these kids that were in her house and um, I think I think a lot of it too is he's already got connections on the team and Rhodes and Bridgewater's another connection like I, I think that's important at least it seems to this front office and um, you know at least the guy didn't get up and and use the f word on live TV. So. That was a uh, that was a great <laughs> interview. I have no, I have zero problem with that to Karis McKinley. Uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, we I'm talked kidding. about that last night. It was hilarious. Did I know I missed awesome. out on the talk. Um, but I want to, I want, I do want to bring up really quick. There was a rumor, right, that the Vikings were potentially uh, interested in Joe Mixon, but the ownership uh, kind of nixed that one in the butt. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about that? I believe. I it. think. Oh, were you going to say something, Drew? Go ahead. Well, I think that was the case for a lot of teams, to be honest. Because uh, I, I heard there was only four teams that, like, really wanted to draft Mixon. And I think it was, like, Vikings, Packers, Bengals, and maybe one other one or something. Yeah. But I bet, for, I bet there was probably 18 to 20 teams that, you know, in the front office, they really wanted Mixon. And I think the ownership just said no. I bet that's, that's in my opinion, what the case was. I don't know the actual. Sure. We, I don't think anybody. Did, but, yeah. I think I think all 32 teams probably would have told you Mixon was the best running back in the class, um, and ownership. No, you don't think so, Sam? No, no. I so I didn't mean to cut you off. I just I, I keep no, hearing I saw, I that, like the last I keep hearing that the last few months. What happened to Leonard Fournette? Like everybody's like Joe Mixon, Joe, Mixon, Mixon. Joe Mixon. The last however many years, Leonard Fournette's been the best thing since sliced bread. So I just don't know what happened in the last like five. Or 2005 running back. Zero versatility. He can't. Okay. He, he's never been asked to catch the football in his life. It's not to say that he can't do it, but he's never proven it, and that's not how LSU uses their running running backs. It's a one-dimensional system that basically is a one-cut runner that gets thrown up the gut, and sometimes he, he's used on the outside as well. But for the most part, their running game, the way they use their running backs is strictly to run the football and run it hard. Understood. But, <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, Austin. I was just going to say, going back to the Vikings, I mean, I think anybody could have seen – Zimmer's, Zimmer's, uh, you know, going down to the pro day and th- there being rumors that he loved the guy. Like, I'm sure Zimmer loved the guy and probably liked him more than Cook. I- I'm sure that he wanted to draft Mixon or at least would have if given the opportunity. But, um, you know, if ownership, I-, I-, I could fully believe that ownership said, you know what, we don't want this PR nightmare. Let's go after Cook. It, it makes sense to do oh, yeah. it. That's what happened. I-, I don't think it's surprising that shouldn't be the Wilfs – Nixed it, nixed Mixon, which is kind of the fun thing to say nowadays. That's a big. That, that's a really. I think that's a really smart move by the Wilfs. You know, when we've talked about the idea of how you know drafting Mixon could impact the Super Bowl, how you associate a team that drafts a domestic abuser that you know everyone is well aware of, and there's videotape evidence. All yeah. of a sudden, people start as you know, people start thinking, "I don't want to go to Minnesota." Like. It's, yeah. it's, a money, it's, it's a money thing. You're trying to make money, and you can't sell Joe Mixon because he's 
He's, you are. You know. <clears throat> but I think that the, the frustrating thing about this is I don't even think it's a story, right? Like, I don't think it's any anything controversial. I, I don't think that just because you say, well, they all wanted him, but they drafted a Cook, I, I don't think it's really... I, I just feel like it's something that was rumored that really isn't that big of a deal at the end of the day. Yeah, I yeah, agree. I don't, I don't know if that it it's was... a huge deal. I just thought it might be worth mentioning. You know, I think it's interesting. Just, just yeah. to provide some, and you know, oh, yeah. come back and look at this. You know, maybe Mixon is a Hall of Famer, and uh, and, and Cook, and yeah, Cook but... is out of the league in five years, and and we and this will be a little nugget that hey, the Vikings almost took him, but the Wolves uh, put the kibosh <laughs> on that. You know. Um, yeah. BJ, why don't you give us, um, is there anything that you can share from the press conference afterwards that might be a little little nugget about this second round that you think people would be interested talking in? talking about the Dalvin, Cook, the Dalvin Cook pick or the Pat Alphon one? Dalvin Cook. Uh, well, for one, one of the first things that Spielman addressed was these character issues, these transgressions, as they call them, down at Florida State. And he made a very strong emphasis on saying that they talked to him multiple times, they expect it to never be an issue again. And he talked a lot about how most of the stuff that people talk about with him was either thrown out, a rumor, or overblown. And he made it very clear, like multiple times, I think he spent like about 20, 30 seconds on it, saying, you know, that this is a kid that is not as bad as people think he is, and we trust him to be a good kid moving forward. Um, another thing is uh, Spielman valued uh, – Dalvin Cook as a first-round prospect, a top 15 guy, he said you know, he actually started laughing when he was trying to explain that when they saw a guy of his caliber drop down to 40 that uh, they were pretty excited about it, and he started laughing and uh, doing his little Rick Spielman smirk. Um, uh, let's, let me think. What else? He made, oh, he, made an, he put an emphasis on saying that he's already buddy-buddy with Xavier Rhodes and Teddy Bridgewater, said that uh, it'll be important to have that those connections coming into the league, and it'll help him, you know, like you guys said before, um, kind of make it make his you know become an NFL player. It'll help having those guys in his corner. Um. Okay, I, so I I think that's good. So let so before we move on, I want to talk about two things in this first round. Um, what do you guys think? <clears throat> so let's talk about our running back group now. What, what what do you see the roles being with these three? Go ahead, Drew. Um, well, I think I kind of wanted to address this earlier, but. Um, I've always thought going into this draft that whoever they pick at running back, and I was fully expecting them to take to pick a running back, that that was going to be their guy for the future. Um, because when you look at Murray's contract and you look at, I mean, right, Jet, they're both essentially on contract years this year. And I, in my opinion, it's kind of a trial between one between both of them for who performs their role better, and whichever guy does is going to stay with the team. And whichever guy doesn't is good. I mean, either one is going to be kind of that complimentary guy to Dalvin Cook. In the league. That's kind of how I see it shaking out now because I think they're going to they'll, they'll play kind of a hot hot hand type of game this year maybe to get Dalvin into things. I I fully expect Dalvin to eventually be the full-time kind of take the bulk of the work uh, player as a rookie. But um, I think we'll see either Murray or McKinnon be that backup for Cook next year. Um, and I think there's going to be to start the season, a three-headed monster, I guess, but then I think Coco kind of uh, be the bolt guy as the season. Do you, uh, do you think this offense is robust enough to feature three running backs? Yeah. No. So yeah, uh, wait, wait, why are you guys so down on this offense? You guys know no, that we no, can. No, 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 not down on the offense. I just well, don't think. I, I think it makes more sense right now to go with with Murray and Cook, and then see McKinnon trans like step into a role like I talked about wow. a couple round tables wow. earlier as like a wide receiver, kick returner. Um, what? Throw him in there at that H spot, the Curtis Samuel role. Yeah, I mean, exactly. The, he's not going to be I, – I think they're going to start transitioning him out of that running back role, and I would almost put money on Murray being that guy that Drew talked about as Cook's eventual, whether it be a counterpart, backup, uh, you know – uh, goal line vulture, either one of those. But I think Cook becomes the guy, just like Drew says. But I think Murray is one A right now. I see. So yeah. I, so I see Cook right out of the gate being the the lead guy, and I see Murray being the short yardage and goal goal line guy. 
Yep. And I see McKinnon kind of disappearing from the running back game. Yep. I think the opposite. Here's what I think is going to happen. At the beginning of the season, we're going to see a lot more McKinnon and Murray than we are going to see Cook, and everybody's going to start complaining about another draft bust and Treadwell this and Cook that and Mackenzie Alexander. But it, the reason I, I think Cook will gain more ground as the season goes on, and the reason for this is because what Drew said, they made this draft pick not for 2017. They made this draft pick for the long run, so I do think he'll work more in as the season goes, but we have seen Zimmer shown a little bit of a reluctance to play rookies a lot. And Brett, when you said, can this offense feature three backs? Absolutely not. If we're talking about feature backs, there are, it's still a passing offense. I think, I hope they're going to run the ball more, but these guys, it's going to be sparse for all three of them. And I don't think, I don't think any of them are going to get enough carries to, say, make an impact in fantasy football or something well, like that. I think it's just going to be a hot hand. I know BJ completely disagrees because we've talked about this on an episode before, and he thinks the team is yeah, moving. Yeah, I was just going to ask you guys when you were going to tell me that when you were going to admit that I was right about that take because well, you know how – Which take was that? That this is a run first offense. Said, this is a run first offense, and that they're going to try to do no matter what. And then you know how Rick Spielman said that today. So he did, well, yeah, he they did were say. the worst rushing offense in the league last year. So the fact that they tried to improve that in the second round of the NFL draft, I don't know that that means they're now a run first offense. Well, they improved they wanted to get in that. the second round of the NFL draft, but they improved it with a top fifteen running back. Dude, I mean, and that's value. Dalvin Dalvin Cook is going to come in, and he's going to be the he's going to play on first and second down initially, right? They're not they're going to work him into a third down role because he can't pass protect yet. They're going to work him on that game. You're going to see Lee Murray and pass protection on third down. He's going to be your short yardage rusher. You're going to see Al- Dalvin Cook getting probably twelve to eighteen touches a game. I bet immediately. This guy is pro ready. He's ex- he's an explosion waiting to happen. I mean, he literally you watch his tape, and he's an absolute home run threat every single time he touches the ball, whether it's out of the backfield as a pass catcher, whether it's outside, inside, whatever, and he's got the breakaway speed that few guys have. There's there's no way that the Vikings can sit him on the bench, especially they're when not, like they're not going to. No way. But so, I think Sam right in that they're gonna they're gonna build him into a new role slowly. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. They're gonna they're gonna work to his strengths first, allow right. him to be you know primary down primary rushing down running back and not force him to do the difficult stuff like you know pass That's protect perfect. behind a questionable offensive line and mm-hmm. leave that to Latavius Murray who is a much better pass protector anyways. Um, you guys think McKinnon's done here, huh? I do. I, I mean I think that he's gonna have a new uh, role. He's not gonna I mean he's he, he's he not gonna have a running back. No. Like, I don't way. think he's done but I think they're gonna they're they're going to transition him into a role that I think people have wanted him to be in for a long time as pass catcher, kick returner, punt returner, though I think Cheryl's is still there. Um, not as the lead dog that everyone thought he would, I guess. Sure. Get him in space, guy. Okay, so mm-hmm. so a, a, a hypothetical. Uh, keep everything the way it is. Except the only thing we're going to change in this hypothetical is that the Vikings move up and select Forrest Lamp instead of Dalvin Cook. How do you feel about today, as opposed to what actually happened? Like, are much you, better. Much better. So, so you'd feel better about Forrest Lamp as opposed to Dalvin oh, yeah, Cook. Absolutely. Your... absolutely. Forrest Lamp and Ryan Ramchick were my top two guys to trade up, for. and I, I thought they had a realistic chance of getting Forrest Lamp, and I think that that would have been, you know. My A plus, I guess, grade or you know, for their first pick would have been trading up for Lamb. Um, I, not that I'm against Cook by any means, but um, you know, I think for me, like it, it, I'll give it a B plus because I'm happy with it. Dalvin Cook is obviously a stud. He's you know, those top four running backs could, are, are all interchangeable, I guess, as far as being that top guy and Cook in most other draft classes is their first or the top running back. But it wouldn't be an A-plus for me or an A if they had gotten Forrest Lamp um, or if they had taken Joe Mixon instead because I, I'm, I was for Mixon here instead of Cook. But, uh, that's just my take on it. You, you just said much better. So I'm just, you said you would feel much better if they had gotten Forrest Lamp. Right. Okay. I, I, just, I, I, feel like Cook, I feel like Cook is a great pick, and I, I think it's kind of negated, negated by the fact that 
they went back in the third round, and I guess we'll get to this after, and got another guy who you can play at center or either guard. Well, I'm, I'm talking just about the second round. Here. Yeah, okay, okay, so let's... I'm, so assuming, I'm assuming that they don't... Oh, no, that's not what I meant. No, that's not what I meant. I meant you keep Elfine, and oh, and they and they okay. just get Lamp instead of Cook. That's where I can... I, I don't need that, then. I don't need that. No, oh, I thought you meant the second round pick. Okay. Yeah, I'd be all. Oh, no, need that. one offensive. You need one offensive lineman on day two. One, and they I got. So. They got. They got the most pro-ready offensive lineman. You know, definitely in this class. Um, he's an absolute stud. He knows exactly what he's doing. Plenty of experience. He's gonna step right in, and he's gonna fill that role. That's all you needed. Now you get. Your, now you got to get your blue chip prospects, your guys that are going to change the game. Delvin Cook is going to change the game. Okay, so, so so let's talk about I'll round. Take, so so let's talk about round three. Um, um, correct me if I screw this up, but so in in round three, pick fifteen, we select Pat Elfline, uh, offensive center or guard, uh, possibly from Ohio State. Uh, seven picks later, we trade our our uh, eighty six <laughs> overall pick to Kansas City. Does anyone have the? Can anyone recap the terms of that trade? Does anyone have? Well, they, they first they traded up for Elfline. Yeah, they yeah. traded up. I'm sorry. With, and then. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, so they traded up to pick nine for Elfline. They picked. They, they, yeah. they were 70th overall. 70th, 70th overall, overall. They traded. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. Fifth rounder. And and I'm and looking then. at our page on VT, and I just hadn't updated that yet. So um, okay, so so nine. Uh, the, the 70th pick overall in the third round, we got Pat Elfline. And then with our uh, 22nd pick or 86th pick overall, we traded that one to Kansas City, correct? For 104, mm-hmm. yep. And then, and then traded 104. And then we the traded night. 104 to San Francisco. So is, th- is there any way we can easily kind of look at uh, what, <clears throat> what picks we started the day with and what picks we ended the day with? Can um, I can tell you that. Tom, go for it. I uh, Vikings started the day with a round three at 79, a round three at 86, a round two at 48, and then round four at 121, round four at 129, round five at 160, round six at 199, round seven at 232. And now... Okay, some uh, of those are for me without the overall numbers. So, so how many number threes, how many number fours, how many number fives, how many number six, how many number sevens? Well, they got three fours, one five, one six, and two sevens. Well, that's so after. Same time. No fives tomorrow. If I'm no not fives, mistaken. okay. So then, then it's then it's two sixes. Then I was I was guessing off of the numbers. <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's three fours, three sevens, and one six. No, three there fours, sevens. two sevens. Three two fours, seven. one six, yeah. and there's two, two sevens. Se- there's two sevens. One at the top. First pick of the seventh round, and one towards the end. Okay. Damn it, Spielman. And <laughs> so, can't It'll be a long day that. tomorrow. <laughs> well, that well I don't think they're going to make all these picks. I think they're going to get rid of a number. I don't think they can. Said, yeah. Spielman said that today. Okay. He, did, he said in his last com- press conference that the goal is the reason why he collected all those picks is so that he can move up and down as they please once they see you guys that they want to target. Mm. Yep. That's And maybe that's even next year. I wouldn't Jake, be surprised. Okay, so 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 let's talk about um, Pat Elfline. Uh, BJ, you want to give us a quick scouting report since he's your guy? One minute scouting he, report. He did. Didn't he? Well, he said he's pro ready. That's all. I, that's all I remember hearing. Yeah, he absolutely is extremely fundamentally sound. He is an undersized guard center prospect that played two two years at three. One at one at right, one at left guard, one at center. Three time all Big Ten player, captain intangibly unbelievable player. Uh, he's known for his leadership skills and his work ethic. And uh, like a little bit undersized, but that doesn't matter because he's got long enough arms to get a nice push, and he knows exactly what he's doing out there. He can play all three interior line positions. And he's a humongous upgrade over Jeremiah Searles, who we can now get rid of finally. There you go. There's one minute. I like it. Perfect. That was think, good. I think that was good. Less than a minute, man. Are they going to start him a guard or start him at center and move Bird guard. over guard? Guard. Because they announced guard. him as a center. Was that only because he yeah. played 2016 at center? I think so. Yeah, he played yeah. a senior year at center. He's more comfortable at guard. They, he said they, he the Seahawks play, so. announced Ethan Posick as a tackle. I thought that was interesting. I think that was a mistake. I don't know. It might have been, but that was, that was different. 
He is, he's built like a tackle, but that was not what I expected. They should all just be announced as ham. <laughs> ham. That's, That's right. it. So hey, ham from Ohio State University. So, so <laughs> did you Drew guys, or BJ, you guys might know why why did he fall so far if he was the most pro ready undersized Undersized and athletic limitation. Because that's what Spielman said in the presser was that he's got athletic limitation. What what are these athletic it's forward, limitations? Forward, he's not very quick with his feet. He's got heavy feet, and yeah, I think Can't that he, it's a tackle. Right. Yeah. So how is he? How is he an upgrade then over the? You guard? don't need to move your feet that much interior. You need to move your feet laterally more when you're a tackle. When you're a guard, you can mitigate that issue. <clears throat> Okay. Well, a lot I'm of the guys that are guards pro projecting to be guards in this draft are former tackles. Yeah. Or yeah. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Zach Banner, like Zach Banner, who can't move his feet and looks like a robot. From is he USC? Yeah. Yeah, that's the big ass dude the from USC. Guy. Yeah. So, do you guys see uh, Elfline projecting <clears throat> as a center and pushing Berger over to right guard, or vice versa? Vice versa. <laughs> He, the thing is, he could, which that in itself makes this a really good pick because he's versatile. Line. But he'll, I think he'll come in, Berger will stay at center, and Elfine will be right guard. And then when Berger does retire, Elfine can move to center, and they can address right guard again. Or or Elfine could stay at right guard, and then they could address center. That's why I think that's why Steven likes to pick so much. That's why I like to pick so much, is they can, they can have a, yeah. a decision there. What happens if... They get up to the to the podium tomorrow and take another guard, right? Well, they could do we're, Dorian we're Johnson. Gonna, we're gonna, we're yeah, gonna talk right. about Dorian. that right now. I good. love it. So good. My question is: Do do they then say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna put Elfline right at center and let Berger start at guard? That's that's more what I see happening. Um, is mm -hmm. someone like uh, Berger moving over to guard where he's played a lot and retiring, or what? Or retiring, he's threatening. Yeah, but but they said he was going to come back, didn't he? For this yeah, year, he, yeah. but he's, yeah. he has said he's playing this year. But yeah. uh, I mean, competition on the offensive line that I would love that. You know, yeah, look at that headband. That's a there. headband. It's been a while. No, I I totally agree, and I think that that's the thing, especially since this team has had such low success drafting offensive linemen. It's like I had that thought too, Austin. I'm like, well, what if they draft two guards? Now they don't have any needs. It's like we can't have the luxury of assuming, okay, they drafted a guy. There's the starter. Position is taken care of. I mean, not even taking into account injuries, which we all know will happen, but just that maybe pick X or Y doesn't work out. You know, I, I think they yep. need to get as many swings of the bat at this as they can. And so I would like to see more ham. So um, we have the second pick tomorrow in the fourth round. Um, I know someone, PA has been all over Dorian Johnson, right, in the Vikings? Yep. Mm -hmm. So Don't talk to BJ about Paul Allen. BJ doesn't what? like Paul Allen? He's the only guy I listen to. Don't say that publicly, man. <laughs> just, just. I'm not the one talking. talking. You guys are talking about it. Plead the fifth. Um, <laughs> I saw the face, though. His face lit up like he wanted to say something. So anyway, he's not a good analyst. He's not a good analyst. <laughs> we're, we're, I, don't, I mean, I don't care. I mean, he know. He should know that he's not a good analyst. He's Sorry. not an analyst. Yeah, he's the he voice of the be. Vikings, man. He's the Vox. He's, he's the best I in the business. It. Then why are we talking? Why is he talking about Dorian Johnson so got, much? How he's, he's got, such good he's, he's got three hours a day to kill. He's got hashtag sources, man. What in the sources? Come on. Are you guys really trying to tell me he doesn't try to be an analyst? <laughs> well, you no, know, he t on his radio show he totally does. He's got three hours a day to kill. Of course, he's got to talk about these yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm not an analyst, and look, and here I, we are. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's trying to analyze these guys. I think he's disseminating he's entertaining. He's a, he's an entertainer. That's what he's doing. So. I have a an unrelated question, and I think Brett, maybe you Love can it. answer this. But oh god, do you think Zimmer? No, seriously, do you think Zimmer is sitting there like I really want to get someone on defense? Like yeah. I'm, I, I, this is the first time ever in the Zimmer era they've taken two offensive players with their first two picks. So I'm curious if you know they don't listen to Zimmer tomorrow and say, well, we're going to open the second round. We want to take a someone from on defense. Like Desmond King is on that list. Caleb Brantley. Yeah, Caleb Brantley's up there. Character issues. Um, yeah, but we've already seen that. That's not a. Uh, that's they're, they're not afraid <laughs> a little bit, to. A little bit different. That, 
a little bit different with him. Okay, well, I, I'm not I'm not privy to what his character issues are specifically. So, um, but I mean, to answer your question, yeah, I think he's probably itching. <clears throat> but I also think I think Zimmer's probably gotten to a point where he's realized that he's the head coach now, and he's got yeah, to look at both you. sides of the ball. Um, he's the head coach, and so I think I and and I almost feel like he probably thinks he can spend more on the offense because he feels like he can work with us because he, he's he's directly controlling the defense. So he knows that maybe even if he has a little less to work with than the offense, he might be able to get more out of it. Yeah. So I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know him, you know, personally. And I, I, I can't speak to that. But I think he, I think he's probably itching a little bit. But I could see us going offense again. And yeah. I think... And I would not be mad if we if we went O line again, um, but I'm also not going to be mad if we go defense at this point too. I mean, at this point, I think you take the best player available. It's to that point in the draft where you're you're really trying to get value picks and just stack up talent. You're not really at, at this point. You're not looking for day one starters anyway. Yeah. Um, you're really just trying to get depth and the best player available. So whoever that is on their board, I think offense or defense, they'll probably just go for it. I think it should be Desmond King, and I think it will be Desmond King. Be mm. I think it should be Carl Lawson. Is he I still like both a really good value pick too? Yeah, they're gonna take. He's gonna take an edge rusher. They love taking him every single year. So Jake Butt. I mean, and Everson Griffin has said too now that he can play inside or would like to play inside as a three tech. Carl Lawson so. is our uh, best player available at number forty-five overall at this point. It's all ranked yeah. for sure. Especially with four or with three fourth-round picks. Man, you can take your your best player with that first one, and then right. just Jake. you know try to if you do have other needs, try to fill those with those other two. Yeah. How about Jake? How about Jake Butt? Jake Butt. I like oh. Jake Butt. I yeah, I'd lie. be okay with that. How about our lazy tight end? Jake, yeah, Butt. Jake Butt is not our our highest rated tight end. I don't believe. <clears throat> we have Bucky Hodges. Wait, that was the lazy guy? No, no, Jordan Leggett. Jordan Leggett. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's get him. Yeah, let's Come get him. God, fight at him. <laughs> God, God, Chow for sure. They'll, they'll definitely take God, Chow. They like him a lot. They've so, met with him three times. So you guys so, think? Do you think it's out of the question that uh, we could potentially be looking at like four or five fourth round picks? That'd be yeah. by two. You think two? Yeah. See, I, I think, think they the, 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 one. Then I just don't get that. I mean. It, it, it doesn't really match up with what uh, Spielman said in his presser. Then, uh, in, unless they're going to trade for future picks, well, no, they're going to they're going to use all, they're going to use the excess in picks to target guys that they want specifically. That's the, that was the goal of collecting more picks. But I thought you said the way I interpreted that <clears> was <throat> that they're going to use those extra picks to move up to target players. You can target target guys moving down too, though. Sure. Mm. Hey, yeah. while we're on this page, let it be noted that that was correct yeah. when I said there are three seventh-round picks. Yeah. Oh, my God, and there are. Okay. Very boring. Sevens. While we get a break in the fifth round, that's I know. <laughs> we'll go get a drink. <laughs> I, you know what? I If they do keep those fourth-round picks, what I think is interesting, and that, this is what Matthew Collar, Kohler, however you pronounce it, put out on Twitter at the end of the night, maybe sneak a QB in there. I did see oh. that. Wolfson said that. Wolfson said that oh, they're going to – Yeah. He said that he thinks that t tomorrow they're going to go after a quarterback. So no. sure so you guys have your pick of the litter at QB. Um, who are you no. taking? None. Kaya. I like him. Dobbs. Oh, Dobbs is Peter. Strong? Yeah. Nope. Absolutely not. Nathan Peter. Peterman. Give me guys, Peterman all day. Can you guys about, hear my dog snoring, by the way? No. Yes. Can you? I just heard it. I can't. You seriously can't? Uh, too? Anyone but Stefan Lufau. Oh, Julio Johnson, lock that one in. That yeah. should happen. He's going to lock that one tomorrow. in. Lock, lock that one in with the first pick that they make tomorrow. See, that is the right guy. There. They should have got Forrest Lamp Elijah and they're just Lee. taking this Elijah guy right Lee. here in the fourth <laughs> round. Elijah Lee is still out there too. I mean, would you really? Would you guys feel bad? I mean, if we if we got Forrest Lamp, if we got Elf Line, and then with our first pick tomorrow, we took Samaj Perine. I would be. I would be happier with the current situation than I yeah. would be with that. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Only because Cook is a better player than all those guys. I love Lamp, too, but I, thought I don't you were think... I thought you were not. I thought you wanted Lamp. 
when we started I'm, the show. I wanted lamp. Alex Jones and I both wanted lamp very <laughs> badly today on the internet. But no, I, I totally did. I just... I would have been very happy with that pick, and I was happy with the pick they made today, especially since they went and, and got Elf Line. I, I, basically, what I'm saying is I can't fault him for getting that much value at a perceived position of need, which running back still was. Yeah, and I think we got to give credit to Spielman again. I mean, I, I the, the moving around he did <clears throat> today, I think, was pretty impressive. I mean, essentially, I, I, I guess I'd have to go back and look, uh, compare the before and afters as far as picks. But, I mean, it feels like... Uh, we didn't we didn't really lose anything in the way of picks today, and still managed to move up and get the guys in both rounds that that yeah. they wanted. Yep. Um, so I mean, I think some some credit is due there. Uh, so I don't know anything else you guys think we need to hit on before we wrap this thing up. I, I think the guy that Let, Sam wants is at one twenty six. He's been sneaking that name around. Isaac Asiata, you're sense. absolutely right. That could be the fifth <laughs> round pick. Actually, the guy that I was talking to on the phone with tech support kept talking about Isaac Asiata. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we were on the phone for three hours, so we ended up talking about the draft, and then he, <laughs> nice. I, guess, I guess he went to school there and was friends with Matt Asiata or something like that. And Oh, that's hilarious. He but could, what if, okay, so, so what if, what if that Asiata is the last fourth-round pick, let's say, for example, you take best player available at the beginning of the fourth round, and then you that take would be, the best player available. That would be position. Carl Lawson and Caleb yeah, so Brantley. If you take Lawson, Brantley, and then Asiata, that's a pretty good fourth round. Oh, yeah. Same in there. there. That's, the, that's easily the best fourth round. I see. for sure in the draft. Yeah. Uh, I, I see if, if the Vikings aren't interested in any of those. There's two <laughs> things I want to say. If the Vikings aren't interested in any of those free agent tight ends, I, I think a tight end goes in the fourth round. I think there's enough of them there that you could say the mm -hmm. Vikings make a play. And mm -hmm. then two, you know, this this little tidbit today about Michael Floyd, we, we forget about that, but that's right. huge. You might not need to even draft a receiver. What was it today? Oh, hold on. Sorry, BJ. I muted you. I, sorry, BJ. I muted you. because you were. <laughs> well, no, you were typing and I could hear you typing, so I was like, I'm just going to mute him since he's not saying anything. What was that about Michael Floyd, BJ? I said, I'll let you know when he comes to Minnesota. Yeah, because like, you're there. You're at Winter Park. What? No, I know my, I know Michael Floyd. So oh. I'll let you know when he's here. Sources. Oh, no, that's not a source. That's just I went to high school with them, and he used to make fun of me in the locker room, so I know him. No, you <laughs> are the source, I mean. He made fun no, of you? What a jerk. <laughs> no, I mean, he's just joking. He made fun of everyone. He called uh, he called our starting running back P-hole for four years. You <laughs> should call him DUI. I'm just maybe. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Too soon. But he's a really I funny dude. He's best dude. I think that's cool. I mean, if if what Andrew reported today or, or passed along is true, you don't even have to worry about getting a receiver with any of your picks if you don't want to. Yeah, and what about using what about using these extra picks to make a trade for some of these tight ends? Or no, these the tight ends weren't the tight ends were released today, right? Gary Barnage and Barnage and McDonald. I think that McDonald's a guy that Minnesota could really like. But they were released, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, I thought okay, McDonald right. was offered for trade. He was really McDonald. Sam's right. McDonald's offered for trade, okay. but I could see you moving some picks because the Niners appear to be in a position that they want to take as many picks as possible. So mm. uh, McDonald's a guy I could see. One of these tight ends, uh, Leggett. Who else is there? Bucky Hodges. But, uh, but, but yeah. So Jay, but but that's right. So I could see one of those guys, but. I, a cool trade for McDonald would make me happy, and Brett, my fantasy league, would be very happy. I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's wrap this thing up, and I think we should maybe grade. Everyone loves grades, right? Yep. We're gonna we're gonna grade day two. So uh, question: We all agree. We all agree. Day one was an A plus. So are we grading as a whole? Or are we grading it? No, we're gonna do it individually, and we're gonna start with you, Drew, okay. since you seem to. No, I'm saying like each pick. Are we grading? No, oh, grade the today. day. The grade day. today. Okay. Um, my grade for the day is an A minus. Um, I just because I think they could have had Mixon instead of Cook, and I think they should have been more aggressive in trying to get Forrest Lamp. But with that said, Cook is an excellent value. He's um, a, he's really a generational talent at the running back position. So um, it's still an excellent pick there. And obviously, Elfline is again, you know, he's a 
uh, plug and play starter at in the interior offensive line. So um, overall, I, I'm I'm very pleased with what happened today. Okay, Sam. B plus it means I'm very happy because that's a legitimate B plus. None of this great inflation where C means you essentially failed. So I think they did a very good job. I mean, for an A, it would have had to been you know something crazy where say say they got Forrest Lamp and he just fell to them. That would be an A for me. But I think what what Rick did was very good. I'd give it a B plus. I'm excited about day two of the draft. Austin, uh, I agree with Drew. A minus. I think. Getting a guy who was the 14th player on our board at, what was it, 41, just basically flipping the digits is a win itself, even if you had to give up a pick. And then getting a guy that, you know, you've kind of got a good problem on your hands with Elfline where do we play him at center, do we play him at guard? Oh, great, he can play at both is a win. So uh, A- minus for me. BJ? A. Hard A. No doubt. That's the most concise <laughs> BJ has ever been. That's beautiful. <laughs> hmm. I mean, you guys, are, you guys are setting time limits for me today. So how about you guys? Just hey. How about you guys just talk instead? Hey, you're the one who has to get to the bar. That's true. Yeah, he did <laughs> say make this quick. We're just trying to help you out, man. <laughs> Brett, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I want to go B, but I feel like I'm just being a jerk. Oh no! Give your honest opinion here. Um, you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid of. It's not that I'm uh, afraid. I just feel like I'm being a little unreasonable about it. You are, <clears throat> and I realize that. I mean, you know, sometimes I get wrapped up in some of these players, and and uh, so I'm That's happy. Fair, with, I, I'm I'm happy with what happened today. I'm excited to go watch some some cook tape uh, tonight and see what he looks like a little bit more now that now that he's now that he's our guy. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just knocking them because, like you said, Drew, I, th I feel like they should have gone a little harder after Lamp. I feel like if, yeah. you, if you had to throw in an extra six-rounder or something in order to get, get that guy, um, I, I would have felt a lot better about our offensive line, I think. Had, were we able to do what we did today but simply swap Cook with Lamp and, and still get Elfline? Um, so I'll say B. Plus, and of course, my grade is weighted, so it's probably going to be worth more than your guys's anyway. Um, <laughs> but you know, no big deal. The hard A, I love yeah. The hard so a. a hard A is worth more than an A. So <laughs> four point three. That's a four point three. What the hard A? The hard A. <laughs> yeah, hard A. Four point three. Nice. That's serious. that's not a joke. That's serious. It's four point three weighted grade hard A. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know when to take you seriously anymore. I just I just can't tell. Good. Good. That means I, that means I'm good. Yeah. So uh, you should never take me seriously, except for when I'm talking about sports. But you are right now. now. <laughs> not right there. I just said hard A. That's not sports. It's in, a letter and an adjective. In reference to a sports grade, I mean, I, I don't. I, I didn't talk about any sports that whole time. I just said hard A. I didn't even I didn't even say what I was talking about. So there's no sports involved. Now, now we're getting into technicalities. Yeah, we're like this we're going way off the rails here. So you guys are playing the technicalities. First, just playing him back. I'm gonna kick you from the room. Say <laughs> <laughs> you got the good feature. Go. So, <laughs> um, all right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. So, uh, tomorrow's gonna be fun. We got a long day in front of us. Uh, should we should we announce that we that the traffic today crashed VT? Yes. And like, and yeah. Like, yeah. And, That's and something to brag about. Give, put that give, on give Twitter. Give everyone a round of applause. I told you to put that on Twitter right away. You guys didn't listen to me. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Well, hopefully maybe maybe we hope it does happen again tomorrow. I don't know, uh, but we're we're gonna have a ton of content. Um, we have a ton of articles up right now about um, grading the picks. We got some quick analysis on the two guys we got today. Uh, and I, I what, what do we got going on tomorrow morning? Do we have any like who's left type posts or anything like that, or is that not anticipated? I got that. Okay. I got it. Okay. Who's so, got the uh, the diary? Is that you, Drew? Oh, yeah, I can do that probably. Okay. So uh, once again, viewers are getting a little insight into our into our VT planning. One sec, I just wanted to announce that this show was so I went no pants on the show. So this was no pants analysis for me. So I wanted to let. Yeah. All right, guys. Yep. Oh, good right. job. Yeah, we'll Get see you tomorrow. tomorrow.